high quality, budget price, sweet performance, the Cthulhu mod tonight on the Vapor Chronicles. Stay tuned. Hey everybody and welcome back to this edition of the Vapor Chronicles. Tonight we're going to take a look at a new RTA that's a rebuildable tank atomizer called the Cthulhu Mod. Now this is a 4 milliliter juice capacity with tons of airflow, tons of juice capacity, top fill, dual coil. If you're a, you know, a fan of an orchid or if you're a fan of a goblin, you want to watch this review because it is a sweet, low price, high quality RTA just for you. All right, let's do this. Let's skip all the shenanigans. Let's zoom in, take a look, break it apart, do a build, and then I'll tell you what I think. All right, let's zoom in. So here is the outside of the container. And let's do this. Let's open this container up. First, you can see there's a little design on here. It looks like you can hang it from a sales rack or something like that. Now I've already washed this. Uh, I do recommend there was some uh, smell of machining oil. So I recommend washing all your tanks when you get them from the factory. Here you have your screws, your extra O-rings, which is a huge amount of extra O-rings. Your little blue friend. So everything's in there and there's some spare coils in there too. <clears throat> and <clears throat> there's your screws for your posts. And there's a little certificate of authenticity at the bottom here. But I really dig this little simple case. It's pretty cool. I can keep supplies in here too after. So that's nice. It looks like they give you black post screws also. So we'll see about that once we get up in there. All right, there you go. Now everybody likes to talk about, you know, what's in a name and the name Cthulhu and how do you pronounce Cthulhu? And I'm one of those people that sort of likes to get to the bottom of things so that we understand where names come from, even if it has no connection to vaping whatsoever. But any of you old school Lovecraft fans, uh, he's an author that made a lot of books back in the day, and you know there's a lot of fans of Lovecraft. Cthulhu is a uh, sort of a monster or a um, a being that was created in this fiction books from H.P. Lovecraft, and there's a huge following. Now, Cthulhu sort of resembles in part an octopus, a dragon, and a human-like or anthropomorphic creature. Okay, and I'm not really going to go much more into that, but let me just share this with you. So how the heck are you supposed to pronounce the name? Well, Lovecraft had said that the language of the old ones wasn't compatible with human speech. And so any attempt by man to pronounce Cthulhu's name would be at best an approximation. Okay, Lovecraft was inconsistent when suggesting ways to pronounce the name. The most popular pronunciation amongst Cthulhu fandom seems to be Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Cthulhu? Cthulhu. So it's Cthulhu. So I'm going to say during this review, Cthulhu. Let's run down some specs uh, of the tank. Basically all the parts, you have your removable top cap B, which is on the top part of the unit, which is right here. Uh, you also have your top cap A, which is below it right here. You have your screw nut, which is inside, which we'll show you. You have the steel tube above that, then the Pyrex tube, then another steel tube. You have your chimney, your second part of your uh, two-part chimney. You have your screws, your positive post, adjustable airflow ring, your insulator, your second insulator, your adjustable copper pin, and your refill screw, uh, refill hole screw. Now, the whole entire tank itself is made out of 304 grade stainless steel. It has four milliliter of juice capacity with massive air design. It has a big adjustable airflow, top refill and bottom refill design. You have four 2.5 millimeter round juice channels. You have negative posts that are milled into the deck. And also the airflow does not touch the copper pin and it's 100% lead free. It also comes with a Pyrex clear tube. There are four top refilling holes. The diameter of the 
uh, deck air holes are three millimeters on both sides. You also have your 2.5 millimeter round liquid channels and the diameter of the wire holes is 1.6 millimeters. The diameter of the tank is 22 millimeters. And you can get more information about this tank at www.cthulumod.com and I'll have a link below for that. And the price that I've seen for this is around $28.99, $29.99 and some places have inflated the price even more. But that is a great value for what you get for this for this mod. Definitely. For this tank, great price, great quality. Let's compare it to what everyone else is going to say that this is a clone of, which is the Goblin RTA from UD. And personally, this is not a clone of that. Um, inspired by, perhaps, but a direct clone it is far from. And I think it's improved upon the original Goblin. Um, every tank that's come out since the first RTA on the market ever is inspired by the previous model from other manufacturers. As long as there's no branding or direct size uh, similarities, you know, I think that it's a fair shake that they're going to share some similar characteristics. But I do have the Goblin original with me. So what I'd like to do is draw a direct comparison between the two. Look at what's different, look at what's the same, and uh, really dive deep and uh, and compare them. Okay, so first things first, the bottoms, both 22 millimeter diameter, both have cock, copper, cocker, yeah, okay. Both have a fill screw on the bottom, um, you know, similar look at the bottom. The side. Now it appears that the Goblin has larger airflow, but that's not true. And the reason that's not true, and I'll show you in a minute, and they both have adjustable airflow. They're both identical in terms of the height of the tank itself. The chimney design is completely different. And the tops are also different. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to take them both apart and I'm going to put them side by side. I'm going to put the Cthulhu over here and I'm going to put the Goblin over here and then we can break them apart and look at all the different pieces, okay? So let's do that real quick. I'm going to speed it up so I don't waste your time. Let's do it. Okay, so <clears throat> there you have it. Um, similar but yet different. When we take a look at the most important things, uh, which would be the build deck. You can see that the air holes are huge going through both of them. You can see the juice wells on the Cthulhu are bigger than the Goblin. You can see the post holes are bigger on the Cthulhu also. Juice wells are bigger.
You can also see where the um, the chimney screws on, it actually leaves a more uh, larger opening, and I'll show you that in a second here. Look at the difference in the size there. Much, much bigger here. All right, so there you have it. I just wanted to show you that. Let's put these back together and uh, let's check the airflow before we put a build in there to see which one feels more open, if at all, and we'll compare the two, okay? So I'm gonna speed this back up also and uh, let's put it back together. I would say they're identical. Um, I think that the Cthulhu has a little bit more of a smooth airflow but they're both extremely the same in terms of the uh, the amount that gets into your mouth. Remember, just because the air holes are wider on the bottom does not mean that the airflow is actually greater. The choke point, which usually is the chimney or the coil that you build if you do a vertical coil, um, but the chimney in the case of this is going to be the choke point. And the diameter of the chimneys, I believe, is the same on both of these. So there you have it. All right. So let's take an up-close look at the Cthulhu. Uh, real nice drip tip that came with it, nice and wide, sits flush, you have two O-rings on here, and you have your copper 510 pin that is adjustable, I believe, yeah. <clears throat> you have your fill hole screw, which you're not going to need, but you can use it, which is at the bottom little number, I have number 540, I believe. And to fill this, you would just grab the top here and you would just unscrew. Now you wanna make sure that when you fill any tank from the top, you wanna make sure you close off the airflow. And this is brand new and it's kinda of tight. This airflow control is, is really tight. So I think it needs to wear in a little bit, but you close it off. Once it's closed off, then you would open. And you can see, yeah, there's large holes for filling. And it keeps your chimney protected because this has an O-ring on the outside here and also on the inside of the ring. And this also comes off, you can see. All the machining looks to be really well done. I'm not noticing any grabbing of the positives and the negatives of the threads. There is a couple little pieces of metal from the, the CNC machining that I saw that I cleaned off. Just make sure you clean these really well and you should be fine. All right. And this is where you fill. Now you'll notice there's a little nut on here and all you do is grab it with your fingers. It might beat up sad dry fingers. And all you wanna do is you wanna grab it with your fingers and counterclockwise. If it's too tight, you can start it by grabbing this here and this, hold the glass and then just start spinning and that'll start it uh, being loosened and then you can just grab it with your finger and spin like this You can see that the Pyrex glass tank is pressure sealed with o-rings on the top and bottom so it doesn't leak Don't lose that little nut this comes off and there's a little O-ring there Pyrex glass tank and here's your chimney, which is a two-piece chimney. There's also a little O-ring at the bottom here. See that O-ring at the bottom? There's your chimney. You have your markings on there. And this unscrews here. There's your four juice channels. And 
and they are monstrous. Now, the four juice channels are 2.5 millimeters and they're rounded. They recommend using cotton wicking with them. Um, chimney is two piece, so you can unscrew this top part. And there is a, an O-ring right there you can see at the top part of the chimney. And here you go. Now the diameter of the air holes on the build deck are three millimeters and there's two of them, one and two. And also the negative posts are milled right into the deck and it's all made by one metal. The diameter of the post holes are 1.6 millimeters for the wire, 1.6 millimeter holes for your wire and they're all the same diameter. I want you to realize that the cross section of the chimney is larger than the diameter of the air holes in the bottom base. Okay, so you're going to get with this wide open, you're going to get proper airflow here. Uh, this is not going to be your choke point on the device. But there you have it guys. So let's do this. Let's do a build. We're going to use the coils that came with it because that's what you're going to probably do when you get it and they look pretty good. They look like they look like 24 gauge canthaw, so we're going to use them. So let's do a build. Now I'm going to speed up some of this build because I don't want this video to be 50 minutes long. So bear with me if I speed up a little bit, but I'll try to explain all the important parts that you need to know, especially when we're wicking. And let's put all these parts aside here. Open our pack. So it looks like these are two millimeter in diameter, these coils. You think you have everything tightened and spaced, just retighten all your post screws. And you can also make any last minute adjustments to your coils. You want your coils to be pretty close to the uh, air hole openings. You don't want to block them but you want them to be pretty close. So you can see. All right, so let's get rid of some hot spots here. And we'll also check the resistance. We're looking at 0.34 ohms. So it's 0.34 ohms. Okay, <clears throat> so let's check for some hot spots. And let's see what we're looking at here. That looks pretty good to me. All right, let's wick this beautiful beast and see how she performs. Okay, so we're gonna use some Japanese cotton. Doing a little BK combing the hair here. Just fluffing and thinning a little bit. All 
Okay. So let's get a little bit of juice flowing here and get these wicks in the right place. So we're going to be using a little bit of the milk from breakfast at Telios. Surprise, surprise. I like to just put a little bit on the coil and a little bit on the cotton here and just sort of pulse a little bit. Don't hold it too long because you don't want to scorch your wick, but just it just sucks it into the wicking a little bit better and doesn't oversaturate. A little bit here, a little bit here. Okay. Now the way we're going to do this is we're going to have a little, don't worry about getting some cotton into the channel because these channels are freaking huge and I don't think we're going to have any trouble whatsoever with flow and you also don't want to leak so we want to get some definitely get some uh, cotton in the channels in the juice channels here okay don't stuff them tight but just the the tips or the tails here you can get right in there and it should be fine that's why I cut these on an angle We'll know. We'll see how this keeps up once we finish, and if there's anything I would change, I'll let you know. All right, but that's pretty much it. She's firing great. And uh, let's put our chimney back on. You always want to reverse, um, you want to put your chimney on and reverse it until it catches, and then you want to tighten it so you don't strip any threads. There you go. And if you want, put your chimney back on. Wipe any excess off from the outside here and then start putting your components back on so we put the base one on first here and put our glass section on our Pyrex then we put our cover on And make sure this nut is nice and snug so you don't get any leaking. Put this on. Make sure that's snug. Now you want to make sure at this point you're gonna you're gonna want to fill this, but make sure that your airflow control is completely turned off. Anytime you fill this. You want to make sure you get your juice levels really low and you want to make sure that you uh, leave the top open right here and then close off your airflow control completely. Okay. All right, so let's fill up a syringe with four mils of juice and uh, I'll see you in one sec. All right, so we have four mils of juice. Go into one of these holes here. Should be real easy to fill. Begin filling. And it should fill up. So that's four mils. Then you take your screw right here, or your top chimney piece. 
This is the removable top cap B and you want to screw that on. Make sure that's nice and snug. Put in your drip tip. A couple primer pulls, open your airflow a little bit and then you're ready to bait. Alternately, if you wanted to refill, you could also refill from the bottom of the syringe if you wanted to, but why would you, right? All right, so the airflow is all the way open. Feels good. There you go. Huge juice channels, lots of airflow. What can I tell you? Let's take it for a vape. All right, so I have this set at 35 watts, 0.38 ohms. It's reading on my M-Class SX Mini, and... Um, Let's take this for a bait. The airflow is open all the way. And let's try it out. So for me, I was playing around with the with the um, wattage settings, and for this build, 35 watts is perfect. I'm getting that sweet flavor, a little bit of warmth, great juice flow because I wicked it right. Um, you know, it's easy to wick this thing because the juice channels are so big that it's really hard to get this thing to dry hit. Uh, I've been using this all day today. You know, with anything with large juice channels like this. You, know, you always want to make sure that when you fill it, you close off the airflow. Make sure that you fill it slow enough that you're not going to pump too much pressure to flood the, the, uh, the build deck. And you shouldn't have any leaking problems. You definitely don't want to take a tank like this and leave it you know, laying sideways at night. Uh, if you let it sit for too long, you could get a little bit of leaking. I have not had any leaks yet. But remember, I'm on like day two with this. So if you have it for a week, two weeks, you might notice more things. What can I tell you? Price is around 28 bucks. It's a steal. It is a steal for that price. The drip tip is nice and short and it's beautiful. Um, nice wide bore. The airflow adjustment ring is a little tight on my version. You know, this needs to be taken off and uh, greased up a little bit or something because it's really, really tight and hard to adjust. It might just be the version that I received. Um, the machining looks great. What can I tell you? I mean, it's, it's a great value, hard hitting. Let's turn this up a little bit more. Let's go to 40 watts. Not a dry hit in sight. Vape's really, really good. Nice, full, saturated vape. Excellent flavor. You know, I made sure my coils were right over the air holes, not blocking them, but just above, and it's performing excellent. So what can I tell you? It's a great tank. If you like to rebuild, if you want to learn how to rebuild, this is a great value and a great quality tank. Big fan. So I'm going to put a link below where you can contact the manufacturer. I'm also going to put a link below where you can purchase this. And uh, that's it for this RTA. It's a win. I like it better than the Goblin by far. All the benefits of the top fill are awesome. Um, you know, it, it's a dual coil tank. So if you like to build dual coils, this is for you. And it's definitely a win. Four milliliters of juice capacity. Drains quick, but it's so easy to fill. Who cares? Okay. Just vapes excellent. So that's it. Uh, airflow, a little bit loud, but... It flows just the same as the Goblin, and uh, it's just tremendous value. So there you go, guys. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe today because I have a huge giveaway. I'm giving away six things on my 10,000 subscriber giveaway. It's been a great ride, and I thank you all for being subscribers that have already subscribed. And if you haven't, jump in, subscribe, and you might have a chance to win. Also, watch my giveaway for all the rules uh, for the giveaway. If you want to find me online, you can go to www.thevaporchronicles.com. You can also join CASA, and I recommend it because we need you to fight for our rights to vape.
All right, go to www.casaa.org and membership is free, so join today. Thanks for watching this edition of the Vapor Chronicles. I will see you so soon because I have a lot of new content to release, new tanks, new mods, new everything. It's going to be great, so join me next time. Thanks for watching.